A regular visitor to the islands of the Caribbean has become a dreaded nuisance over the past 10 years. For reasons that are not quite clear, the sargassum seaweed that typically washes ashore now arrives each year in overwhelming, extraordinary amounts. When it comes, it threatens marine wildlife, disrupts local fisheries, and then dies on Caribbean beaches, leaving stinking, toxic debris that drives away tourists. The Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism is looking for ways to deal with the problem and has launched a three-year project with the New Zealand government to turn this environmental hazard into an economic opportunity. I am Jewel Fraser, and in this Voices from the Global South podcast, I hear more about the project. My name is Milton Horton, and I am the Executive Director of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism. So my pleasure. Thank you. And Dr. Headley? So my name is uh, Maren Headley, and I am the Program Manager for Fisheries Management and Development. And um, it's also a pleasure to meet you. Could you just explain what CRFM is and what it does? Okay, the CRFM it means the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism. So we are a CARICOM organization, specialized organization dealing with the living marine resources, fisheries, as well as aquaculture development. Could you please give us a little background to the initiative, the Sargassum Initiative with the New Zealand government? And why was that initiative deemed necessary? Okay, perhaps I can take this one. And and I will start by giving a little background about the sargassum. You know, we started having significant quantities of sargassum coming in our waters and on our beaches in 2011. Now, sargassum is an algae. It's a brown algae. And there are two main species that have been coming, sargassum natans and sargassum fluidans. Sargassum is a natural seaweed. It's a very important part of the marine ecosystem in the wider Caribbean region and in the Atlantic Ocean. And we normally have small quantities of sargassum in our waters and on our beaches, uh, and that would come from the Sargasso Sea. But since 2011, we have been experiencing this new phenomenon (laughs) with this massive amount of sargassum um, coming into our waters. Naturally, this sargassum is coming from a new source. It's not coming from the Sargasso Sea, which is where the normal sargassum would come from every year. So this is a new source of sargassum, and it's coming largely from an area that is called the North Equatorial Recirculating Region. And that's a part of the Atlantic Ocean, and it comes across the Atlantic. In fact, um, the, the, the sargassum has been um, coming ashore in the Caribbean as well as in West Africa at the same time, because there's a huge conveyor belt <laughs> that is uh, taking the sargassum all the way across the, the, the Atlantic from the West African coast all the way into the Caribbean. Why is this happening? No, we're not totally uh, and completely sure, but based on the scientific research that has been done, there are three main factors that we can identify. The first one is climate-related factor, climate change-related causes. Second is nutrient enrichment. And the third, there are some hydrological parameters, and these are all contributing to the massive bloom of sargassum that we're seeing. So so how is it affecting us? Well, it is affecting our fisheries, it it is affecting our tourism, it is affecting our marine ecosystems, because when this massive amount of sargassum comes in our water and on on our beaches, it affects our economic activity. Fishermen are not able to go out, it affects tourism, tourists don't want to come. When it decays, it it generates a very foul smell because it's high in uh, hydrogen, sulfide. And um, these are all having negative impacts. So it it has been coming steadily um, since 2011. So we have had to find ways of dealing with it. It also affects human health because the hydrogen sulfide gas is toxic and it smells horrible. So it creates respiratory problems, headaches, dizziness, vomiting, all, all these symptoms have been associated with it. But the sargassum also has high concentration of 
heavy metals which are toxic so arsenic and cadmium for example they they have been found to be present in the sargassum so naturally with this change in situation and with the, with, with the massive inf- influx of sargassum our countries have been reaching out to development partners to donor countries to get assistance in dealing with it and it is against this background that at a recent um, high level meeting between caricom countries and new zealand we had made a presentation on the problem that we are experiencing and express the need for some support to deal with it now thereafter new zealand sent a team of experts on a field mission fact finding mission they met with us and met with others and they decided to support a project and they developed the project concept and shared it with us you know we provided our input so um, the long and short of it is that we have this project that is entitled and aimed at mitigating the environmental and economic impacts of sargassum seaweed influx in the Caribbean region through the creation of technologies and value chains for marine biomass. That is development of products that would have economic value and can be of economic benefit. Right. Could you name the the organization in New Zealand that is working with you on the project, please? It's called Plant and Food Research of uh, New Zealand. It's a New Zealand Crown Research Institute. So it's plant and food research. Okay. So I see that you had a workshop, a training workshop in March, kind of like preparing and laying the groundwork. How did that training workshop go and who attended? Where did the attendees come from? The workshop was held on the 3rd of March and it was a training workshop to expose the persons from the countries that would be involved in this project working on the ground to expose them to the project, to introduce them, to explain the objective, the activities and exactly what is planned and to train those persons in the techniques that we would use to uh, collect sargassum, to sort and to identify the different types of sargassum, the species, as well as the different forms of the different species that we're dealing with, as well as drying, packaging, shipping, etc., collecting, you know, the the, the, the big basic environmental data at sea, et cetera, when we, when we actually collect the sargassum. So the purpose was really to expose the persons who would be involved in the project to the project, its objectives, and the activities. There, 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 were, there, were, there are four countries involved in the project. However, we had participants from 10 CARICOM countries in addition to a, a number of uh, partner institutions that would be working with us uh, on this project. So we had people from CARDI, we had from the University of the West Indies, we had from the University of Belize, etc. So a total of 43 participants were trained and exposed uh, to the project. And those participants were just from UWE, from the universities, or where else did they come from? They were from uh, several different types of institutions. So the core institutions were the national fisheries departments, but also, as I mentioned, universities. There was also CARDI. So government departments that have an interest in the the, the sargassum. There are also participants from the representative from fisher folk organizations involved uh, in the training. So government private sector and other regional um, partners that, that, uh, that have an interest in the sargassum issue and in finding solutions and would be, you know, contributing to the project. Yeah. Okay. Was there a decision as to what sort of products that would be produced? Okay. Perhaps I should ask Marin to jump in and take that one. <laughs> Marin? Um, okay. The plan is to have high value products. So they're looking for bioactive compounds that could be used in cosmetics or pharmaceuticals. So that would be the aim. Okay, thank you. I thought it was supposed to to begin in April. So has it already gotten off the ground? Well, it was supposed to start officially in April, as you noted, and we were all set to go with Barb 
beta's <laughs> with the trial sampling. Um, however, you know that during the first week of April, <laughs> the volcano in St. Vincent and the Grenadines started erupting, and that uh, deposited a lot of ash in the waters in the nearby countries, including Barbados. And as a result, we could not proceed with the sampling in Barbados. So we shifted to Belize. So the project was delayed a little. We started the, the field sampling just last week, in fact, here in Belize. And I think maybe next week or, or the following week, work will commence in uh, Barbados and shortly thereafter in Bahamas and then hopefully in Jamaica. So we're, we're, we're just getting off the ground. But having said that, we have done a fair amount of other preparatory work. So how long is the project expected to run for? It's a three-year project and it's scheduled to run until 2023. So how is it being funded? Who is paying for it? Okay, it has been funded by the government of New Zealand, the Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs and Trade of New Zealand. So it's the government of New Zealand that is funding it. Uh, of the 35 key persons who are involved at this stage in the project, 16 of them are women. Okay. So, so it's just, you know, just under uh, 50%, I would say. So could you tell us what are the hoped for outcomes of this project? Because you spoke at the start about the impact on the environment of the Gaza. So if you could tell us what outcomes you expect in terms of the environment, in terms of economic and in terms of social impact. Right. Well, well, listen, the, the, the sargassum right now is having a negative impact on our environment. So it is coming and it keeps coming. So what we're trying to do is to find a way of using it that will be beneficial to our people from an economic perspective, socially, and for the health of the environment. So the key thing is, can we collect the sargassum even before it's gets ashore and can we take that and convert it into products that will have commercial value and then can feed back into the communities to provide and help with incomes with, with the social progress etc and also minimize and mitigate the negative impacts of the sargassum staying in our waters and on our beaches, decaying and having the negative impact that I mentioned earlier on the ecosystems, on the fish. So the idea is to collect, remove it from the, uh, the, the sea as much as we can and can utilize in a beneficial manner. So we are at a very early stage of this project. We are really just at the, the beginning stage where we're trying to collect the raw material, that is the sargassum itself, and then testing the sargassum to see um, exactly what it is made of and how best to use it and what type of products can be extracted. So after the initial uh, phase of collecting and testing, the next phase is product development. Uh, and during that phase, we would experiment with the um, various products and processes that could be used to develop these useful products that we are aiming to get um, from the sargassum. If that works well, then we move to the next phase, which is the third phase, which is product commercialization and development strategy. And finally, the fourth phase would be outreach and supply chain development, where we try to engage with industry and stakeholders in the wider region in order to commercialize the project and get the private sector fully engaged and transfer you know to to, to them the technology and the processes for using the sargassum so that um, whatever if we have a successful product and process it can be taken up and used by entrepreneurs in our countries for viable businesses so that's the process that's the that's the, that's how we envisage the project impacting on our economies uh, as well as uh, on our coastal communities and our coastal waters and ecosystems thank you so just 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 to backtrack a little so dr eddie mentioned cosmetic products are there any other products that you're looking at 
Well, it'll really be dependent on what bioactive compounds we find in these preliminary sampling trials. So um, no, nothing specific as yet. And that was just an example. Okay. So, so my final two questions, how will you know your project has succeeded in, in, in achieving the goals that you set out there? What is your measurement? How will you measure your success? Well, the product will succeed if at the end we have one or two or more products that we can commercialize. And that has been taken up by uh, entrepreneurs and, and people in the region, potential you know, investors, and that an industry is created. <laughs> Great. That's, good. That's clear. So please add anything that you think is important that I haven't thought to ask my final question. Well, you know, I'm very grateful for the support that the government of New Zealand is providing under this project. Um, we, we we have been experiencing this very serious problem since 2011, and we we do need and we are very appreciative of the help that the government of New Zealand has come forth in providing us in helping to address this specific problem. Um, it's a, a problem now, but hopefully... Uh, um, if we're successful, we can convert that into an asset. Thank you.